Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about loops in Python. So uh, at the top of my screen I have just a notepad open. It could be something like any text editor uh, you can use for this. Um, and in the bottom of my screen I have a terminal opened or a command prompt. Uh, and then if we look at the files we have so far, um, from our first videos we had uh, these Python scripts. Last time we talked about conditions and if statements. Um, every file here, every script file, ends with a .py file extension, and that just tells us that these are uh, Python scripts. So today we're talking about loops, and I'll be using the script. So in the top, uh, my Python script, so far I already have one variable, x, and I'm saying x equals zero, so we've already covered setting variables before. And what we want to do today is um, something called looping. So uh, sometimes whenever you are running a program, uh, you want to uh, run some command over and over and over again. Um, usually it's for checking or um, counting or doing all sorts of different things that we can uh, use the same code um, multiple times. And the way that we can easily use the same code multiple times is by doing loops. So uh, it'll make a lot more sense in a second, okay? So uh, first, uh, there's a couple different types of loops in Python, and one of the most common um, that you'll use is called a while loop. So just like you would say, um, while I'm doing something, or while this is true, I want to do something. So while it is raining, I want to carry an umbrella, right? So um, in Python, it would be the same thing. So while and then if you think back to the last video, we were talking about conditional statements or checking statements. So we have some condition that comes after this. So we can say, for example, while x, remember x is an integer, starts at 0. So while x, let's say, is less than 10, we want to do something. So this is very similar to the structure of the if statements that we looked at last time. So instead of an if statement, we just say while. And we have some conditional statement that we check for x less than 10. And uh, right now, x is 0. So this condition is false, right? Oh, sorry, it's true. So while x is less than 10, right now, this is true. So since this is true, we will run whatever code is under here. So just like the if statement, we go down. And then you want two spaces over, or to space over a little bit. Um, and then we'll just print x. And um, I'm going to put print in brackets this time. So before I printed x, like just print x. Uh, and you can also print in brackets. And this is actually the correct way to do it. OK. So here we have while x is less than 10, print x. Well, this is true right now because x equals 0. So we will print x. And then it will keep going around and printing, right? So if we ran this right now. Um, uh, so I'm going to, uh, oh no, not print, sorry. So I'm going to run python loops.py, and then what we'll get is zero, and it just keeps going. So this is actually the program running right now, and it keeps running over and over again. Okay, so I actually have to stop that early. And the reason that it keeps running over and over again is because x doesn't change. The value of x just stays at 0. So x is less than 10 forever. And that's called an infinite loop, and the loop will never stop. Sometimes we want an infinite loop because we want our program to always keep running and keep checking for something. Um, but most of the time, you do not want infinite loops. And if your program doesn't exit properly, most likely it's an infinite loop problem. So in this case, what we have to do is print x, and then we need to increment x before we um, go back and check again. So here I'm going to do increment, and I'm going to use um, a special uh, special way to increment. So here I'm saying x and then plus equals 1. So normally if we're assigning a value to x, we would just use the equal sign or if I was going to um, just do some basic math, I can do uh, x plus 1, like we did last time. So x equals x plus 1. So we could just do this, but a shorthand 
of this is to say x plus equals one. And what this means is add uh, one to x to the value of x. So it's just a shorter way to say it. So this is increment, okay? So now what we're doing is checking while x is less than 10. So this is true. So we're going to print x and then add one to x. Now it's gonna go back up and check again. While x is less than 10, well, we've only add one to x. So now x is equal to one, it's less than 10, that's true. So we print again, add one. And then we just keep doing that over and over again until x is less than 10. So let's see what happens whenever we run that. So we started at zero, so x is zero, and then we counted up to nine. Well, why did we only count to nine, right? So um, we were checking until x is less than 10, and what happened is we incremented until we got to nine. We printed nine because nine is less than 10, and then we incremented to 10, and then we do another check. Then x was 10, x, no, 10 is not less than 10, it's equal to 10, right? So um, it just exit at that point. So whenever this becomes false, then uh, the while loop exits. And that's what we had here. We counted from zero to nine. If you wanted to include 10, then just like the if statements we saw last week, you can do uh, less than equal to 10. So now this will count from the first value of x to um, less than or equal to 10. Okay. So let's count that again. And you see that we count up to 10. Okay. So um, that's that's pretty much it for while loops. You can do while any check is true. So you could even just write true, okay? Um, and this would run forever as well because it's always going to be true if you wanted to actually run forever. Um, but in this case, just consider that we have um, some statement that we are checking. And while this statement is true, then we will run all of the code in here and then keep running it over and over again. Okay, uh, whenever this statement becomes false, then the loop will stop and it will jump down to the next line. So um, we have another thing, let's say print, I'm outside of the loop. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here is finish this loop and then this print statement is outside of the loop. So after the loop is finished, we will see this print statement. Okay, now what happened is we printed uh, basically 10 times, uh, 11 times, and then once uh, this was false, then we jumped down to print, I'm outside of the loop. So then the rest of the program continues on. This loop finished, this block of code finishes, but the rest of the code in the program will continue to run, okay? Um, Right, so the next thing I want to um, do, so ah, I, before I go to that, um, notice that I put a space here, so a blank space. What this blank space says after the loop is that the loop is finished. So if I put this too close to each other, then um, uh, Python might misunderstand this print statement as being part of all of this loop code. So. Yeah, it still worked here, but sometimes uh, Python doesn't like um, everything being close. So I usually just add a space there to say, kind of delineate, this is where my loop ends, or this is where my block of code ends, and then we can start another block of code down here, okay? So um, just be aware about spacings. Um, keep one space after some block of code, okay? Um, right, so just like if statements that we talked about last week, you can also have an else statement on a loop. So here we have while, and then we have some statement. So while this is true, do something. But you can also have a else. So then um, I'm gonna print finished. Now this else statement is attached to the loop. So it usually runs whenever the loop is finished. So I'm gonna say uh, finished. Okay, so now we have some code. While x is less than or equal to 10, I'm gonna move that again. 
while x is less than or equal to 10, print x and then increment 1. So while this is true, keep running print x and increment, print x and increment. And then whenever this becomes false, then run all of the code in this else statement, which is just print finish. That means that the loop is finished. Okay. Now these, this block of code is all one block of code. They're all related to each other. Um, and then we have this empty space and we have print I'm outside of the loop. So once this loop is finished, then it will run all of the rest of the code in our script. Okay, there you go. So we counted zero to nine, zero to nine, and then we said finished, and then we ran the code I'm outside of the loop. So that's the additional code, okay? So um, while loops are, are pretty common, as long as you can set up um, this, this check properly, um, normally we initiate some sort of variable, uh, at the beginning and then we do some sort of check on that and then we keep a counter um, inside the while loop but there's a lot of different ways you can do it and we'll talk more about them uh, in, in uh, as we go along okay so another type of loop that I want to talk about is um, a for loop this is used in a little bit of a different way um, while is just while something is true uh, keep looping and whenever it becomes false stop looping uh, a for loop is usually um, dealing with things in a list or um, in Python, I usually use it for things in lists or arrays. We will talk about them later and then I'll use for loops to go over them. Um, today I'm going to be using something called a range, but they uh, are structured a little bit differently. So we have, for example, for, and I'm going to say y in um, range. Okay, for y in range 20 to 30. So um, notice, for the while loop, I had to create my variable or set my variables before x equals zero, and then I could use x equals zero in my loop. In a for statement, in a for loop, um, you're creating a variable. So I created a new variable called y, and it's in the range 20 to 30. Okay, now let's add, just like before, we'll add some code um, underneath this, so let's do just print y, print y, and I don't have to do anything else. I'm going to remove that space. Notice we still have this code outside of the loop, so I'm just going to keep that in there. So we have for y, this is a variable, in, and then we have a function, which we'll also talk about later, in the range of 20 to 30. And what this function does is um, just calculates that range or counts in that range. So basically what this function will create is first it will write 20 and then 21 and then 22 and then 23, um, etc. Okay. So that's what this code will do. Remember I'm putting a um, hash sign or a pound sign and then this uh, text. So this is a comment. This is not part of my code. It's just a note for us. Um, so a range will basically count uh, within the range that you provide it. So this is going to give us the numbers 20, all the numbers between 20 and 30. Okay. Now in terms of the loop, what happens is uh, the range will generate the number 20 and then it will put the number 20 in Y. And then it, we will use 20 in the variable. Uh, assigned to the variable and then do something with it. And then the next time we come around for, uh, in our for loop, it'll be 21 and Y will become the value of 21. And then we'll do something with that value. Okay. So it's probably easier if I just run it and show it. Okay. So here we have for Y in the range 20 to 30. So, and then all we're doing is printing the variable Y and uh, whenever we run the code, we just get 20 to 30, and then we get the code, I'm outside of the loop. Okay, so I'm going to remove this just to make it a little bit easier to see. Um, so that's all we're doing here is um, we don't need any variables created before. We can just have this for loop. We create our own variable, and we can name this anything. Let's call it, um, I don't know, taco. Okay. So this is just a variable. We can use any name we want. And what will happen is it will count the range between 20 and um, uh, 30. 
Okay. And then we're printing taco. And I'm going to move that back. Okay. So uh, the difference between a while loop and a for loop is that we're dealing with um, uh, different um, things in a group. So in this case, we have a group of numbers, and that's the range. Um, if you gave it a string, um, let's say banana, then we have a group of characters, and it should loop over that. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're for loops loop over groups of things, and they those groups can be anything. And we'll talk more about the different types of data that you can give it um, later. Okay. Let's stick with uh, integers for now. Okay. So. We have four y in range and then print y. We don't have to do anything with calculations or anything. It will just take whatever this value is, whatever the current value is, and then assign it to y, and then we'll do something with it. Okay. Now, sometimes, like you don't always want to, um, uh, let's say, just print out everything. Maybe we want to do something with this data. So we can do a couple different things. Um, for example, the most common is to use our conditional statements, our conditional checks. So just like we talked about last week, we can do something like if, um, let's say y is 27. If y equals equals 27, and that means if y is exactly 27, and then the two dots mean do something, uh, what are we gonna do? Uh, let's just print uh, the text y is 27 okay so we're doing a check inside the loop notice I've ad added additional um, spaces because this print statement is under the if statement not under the for loop this is called a nested statement so here we have our for statement print is inside for if is inside for and then technically this print statement is inside the if block okay um, so just be aware of your spacings now what should happen is whenever we're running through we will print y and we will print 27 and then we should see text under here that says y is 27 yep y is 27 okay so we can do all sorts of different conditional checks maybe we want to know um, if y is greater than 27 or we want to know if um, uh, some character let's say the banana uh, text if something is an a we want to say uh that we found a vowel or something like that. Okay, so you can do any checks you want. Okay, but sometimes um, you might want to get to a certain point and then stop. So we can say, let's say that we only want to go to 27 and then we actually want the loop to stop. We don't want to run the loop anymore. Well, if you want to get out of the loop, then you can do something called break. Okay, and what break does is jumps out of the loop and completely um, uh, doesn't keep going. So basically, we are testing here if y is 27, we print that y is 27, and then we break, which means that the loop will stop. What will happen is we will count up to 27, print out y is 27, and then we will not print out 28 and 29 because we've broken the loop. Okay. Now I need to add some code back. This code is outside of the loop. I'll just say outside. Now this code is not related to the loop at all, and what should happen is once we break out of this loop, then we will print outside, okay? Or once the loop exits, then we print outside. Yep, so here we counted from 20 to 27. We said y is 27, and then we broke the loop, so we did not count 28, 29, 30, and then we print outside, and this is the code. So the, the program continues on, but the loop stops the loop breaks okay um, and then we can also do uh, one other interesting thing with loops uh, there's a lot of interesting things to do with them uh, but one other interesting thing we'll show here so maybe I don't want to print 24 right so we have our print statement here and this always runs as long as um, this is true as long as for y in range is is true then we will get this print y. So I'm going to add an additional if statement at the top of here. If y equals, uh, what did I say, 24? 
if y equals 24, and then I don't want to print 24. I don't want to run any of this code uh, from print to break. I don't want any of this code to run if y is 24. I want to skip everything else. So what I can do is if y equals 24, and then I can just do continue. Okay, and continue um, basically skips all of the code after continue and restarts the loop again. So the loop y will go to the next number, it will skip to 25, um, and then start running all of the code and doing all the checks again. So continue will keep the loop going, but it will skip everything after it. Break will just stop the loop where it's at, right? So whatever your condition is, as you're going along, break will stop the loop, continue will keep the loop going, but skip over anything after it. So um, I probably use continue more than I use break because sometimes we don't want to run a bunch of additional code if we know that it's gonna be worthless to check it. So imagine that you had a lot of code running after some check. Uh, well, if you can just check something very quickly and you know that none of that code is going to run, if you skip all of that code, your program will work much faster. Okay, um, But don't really worry about that too much. Just wor think about um, uh, in a for loop or in a loop, you can use continue to keep the loop going but skip some code, and you can use break to get out of the code. So um, remember, earlier I said our while loop, so I can just do while true, right? Um, eventually, I would have to use a break to get out of that code, okay? Um, I would have to have some some observation that I'm making here. Maybe I have a sensor or something like that. So I would read the temperature of a sensor. If the temperature is greater than um, I don't know, uh, 40 degrees, okay? If it's greater than 40, uh, then break, right? So what this would do is keep checking the temperature all the time until the temperature is greater than 40 degrees and then it would break from that. So this is one case where you might use a, a, um, a while true, an infinite loop to check temperature and then stop running whenever temperature gets too hot, for example. Okay. So there's a lot of interesting things you can do with loops and by uh, writing a loop and then combining a little bit of logic uh, in your conditional statements, like if y is 24 or whatever, um, then we can control how different things go. Oh, I didn't run this. Okay, so if y equals 24, continue. So whenever I run this code, what will happen is you'll have 20, 21, 22, 23. We'll get to 24, and then we will skip the print statement and this if check. So 24 will not print, and then we'll get 25, 26, 27, and then y is 27, and go outside. That's what should happen, okay? So let's see if that's true. Yep, so now 24 is gone because I'm continuing, which means I don't even care about this code. I'm going back to this for loop, okay? So um, there's a lot more you can do with loops, and we will cover them uh, uh, later. Really, loops are... are where the power comes in. Whenever you combine loops and if statements, that's kind of the bread and butter of, of all programming. Um, everything gets a little bit, um, uh, let's say, code dependent from here, depending on how the different code works. But most programming languages, you're looking at uh, setting variables, you're looking at if statements or decision checking, and uh, loops. So if you can get a good idea of those concepts, uh, you should be um, on your way to becoming a good programmer. So uh, I hope that was interesting for you. Thank you very much.